Comic Book Savant, episode 466. Welcome back to the Comic Book Savant podcast. I'm your host, James Harris. This episode is going to be Ask Comic Book Savant, episode 4. Um, you guys have really came out and responded really well to these episodes. I have a ton of fun doing them. Because um, some of the t- some of the questions I get from you guys are are questions I think um, you guys would be at least interested in from me. So it's always fun to see what kind of questions I get and um, how I respond to them and how you guys really seem to like these episodes. Like I said, this is something I don't know in 14 years of doing a podcast. It took me to now to to think of the idea of doing a ask everything kind of uh, format. Uh, podcast every so often but it's been really fun and getting to know you guys and how your minds work and what you like to hear from me because I like to give you content that you guys are going to be interested in and that's fun for me to create and it's entertaining for you guys to listen to so um, let me just jump right into it because I don't want to keep you guys forever in these episodes and I know they tend to run a little longer Um, but we have about five questions or so this episode that I'm going to go over first question I have is uh, when did you first find comics for me my journey in comics were uh, very young uh, for some of you that haven't been around for the whole 14 years of the show I have told the story different times about how I got into comics really it was a family thing um, I had uh, two cousins my uncle uh, he was a postman he was a retired postman he passed away of cancer Many, many years ago when I was very young, probably when I was around 11 or 12 years old that I was very close to his two sons, um, because he was a postman, he loved for them to read and he delivered the mail. So he would do um, a lot of Marvel and DC subscriptions. And um, so they I mean, and I don't know if he got a discount because he was a postal worker, but like he had them subscribe to like every comic that you could get a subscription to. So he used to get them in the mail and have tons and tons of comics. And he and my uncle always kept the subscriptions going so they would run out of space. This is before, you know, the speculator, you know, market. I mean, this is from when I was a young child. So um, they just used to hand comics down to different family members. And I think um, when I was around two or so, they came to visit and um, I had a bunch of, uh, you know, comics. They just gave my mom a bunch of comics for me. And, um, you know, my mom had books, you know, that that formative time. And she said the first thing I picked up to read was one of the comics that they had given her. My cousin, you know, my cousins were considerably older. If I was two at the time, they were more like eight and ten ish around that age so they just were handing down the comics he said i just gravitated to a comic and the first thing i ever read was a comic book um and that's kind of where that love and passion kind of started and my cousins continued from that point i became uh, very into just reading and my mom was huge on education um though she never went to college herself i was actually the first one of my immediate family between me and my sister and my mother and my father to go to college and it was always like an expected thing because I always took to reading uh feverishly um my mom was like, like I said super big on education um certain words in comics she didn't know so my mom always um had a dictionary for me and she always made sure we had a up-to-date encyclopedia set in our home and she always would tell me um if it's a word that you don't know I will make sure you would have the resources available. If you don't know the word, learn the word, learn what it means, learn how to uh, pronounce that word. And if it's something you don't know, you have books here that you can learn about it. And so at a very young age, even though she might have been limited in what she knew of the world and her experiences, she always made sure I had the resources available to even if I couldn't have those experiences at that time, I could learn about those experiences so long as i um had the ability uh and the desire to learn something i always had the opportunity to and i i do appreciate that about my mother even though in my later years me and my mother don't have the best relationship i i appreciate that from her the most because it makes me the core of who i am 
of where I, why I love to do research and I, I am fev- I, I'm a fanatic and maybe I'm OCD about it, about how I go about consuming information. Like each day I try to learn something new or better way or uh, to go about doing the things I do on a daily basis. Um, I feel like w- once you reserve yourself to stop learning, you become useless. You could always learn something, no matter how old you are. If you're willing and you're capable, you should always push yourself to become a better person each day. And that's kind of what I live my life out of. But um, back to the the, the main question and and finding comics. Uh, My cousins kept handing me down comics uh, throughout my childhood um, till I actually we um, we I was living in Connecticut. We moved to North Carolina, which they were currently living at the time. And then I was as close by them. So every time I would go visit their place, they always had droves and droves of comics. I would just go in their room and, and, and read comics all the time. So they stopped handing them down to me. Uh, and then I start getting my own. So it was a constant thing from uh, two years old to on and multiple cousins that I had um, and, uh, and uncles like collected comics. So um, it was something that was all around uh, my family that I was exposed to from a young age. And then it just, because I was reading them, looking at them, seeing them read them and always was interested in that world and those characters, I just um, took to it to like a fish to water basically. So that's kind of when um, I first found comics, I was a two year old <laughs> and my mom said the first thing I picked up was a comic. And from every memory that point on that I can earliest memories, I always had comics because my cousins always made sure I had them. And I always read them from the uh, fact that I was two years old to the fact now I am 44 years old. I still read comics, not on a daily basis, but on a pretty regular basis. Uh, Next question um, I have is what made you want to host a podcast? This is an interesting story that I've told uh, from time to time. And um, it started very simply Um, when iPods first came out. I was a a techie, which I told you guys from profession. Um, I have my degrees or, or my diplomas and degrees that I have are centered around um, IT, computer networking, web design, um, and most of the work I've done in the professional world has been uh, like tech support. I've ran multiple small businesses of my own where I've built, I've done everything from building computers to um, tech consulting, uh, helping companies set up their infrastructure, uh, what equipment to buy, um, been a webmaster of a multi-million dollar corporation, cosmetic corporation. I've done a ton of different things in the realm of what my my uh, discipline was in, in IT, computers, technology, and I've always been a techie. I probably, it's funny, I'm probably less of a techie now than I was like 10 years ago. Um, but um, when iPods first came out, it was new tech. It was a whole new thing. I jumped all over it. I start hearing once I got an iPod, my first iPod about podcasts and what is a podcast. And I was, and I heard about iTunes and I was like, what's iTunes? And I heard someone say on the internet about, um, you know, you can find a podcast on anything. It's like a talk show. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I can find one on comics. So I did a search. I found a handful on comics and I was fascinated by it. But quickly after getting into the whole thing of, oh, I can put these things on this little device, carry it with me, because I always have loved music and technology. Like I always had like, um, like handheld game devices, like the old uh, where it was like the one game and it was like the sprites to like uh, Walkmans to Discmans. If anyone remembers a Discman, it was a CD Walkman, CD player Walkman, all these kind of things. I was always into it. So um, an iPod was the next iteration. So then I could get these talk shows and I, you know, I love talk shows growing up. I watched like the Sally Jesse Raphael show, Geraldo, 
Jerry Springer. Like I grew up on that kind of talk show structure. So to have something like that, that I could carry around in my pocket and I could just throw headphones on and listen to it. Um, it just fascinated me and I could learn about the comic book industry. Um, it was just a fascinating thing, but I went through the ones I was listening to and it was only a handful at the time. It was like comic geek speak, maybe, um, uh, what else was around? Around comics, maybe, was it? The guys out of Chicago. Um, uh, Word Balloon. Comic Book Noise. Um, and some other ones sprinkled around here and there. It's hard to remember because it was so long ago now. Um, and the, I only heard one podcast that had uh, an African-American even on the show. And that was Comic Book Noise. Um uh, you know, my friend, uh, Derek. And, um, I was like, yo, that's, that's crazy because I know from my own personal experience about being an African American male, that it's a, I have tons of friends that are into comic books, but I, it wasn't reflected in the pool of what I was seeing out there. And it bothered me. It really bothered me a lot that Derek was the only one that I heard that sounded like me, looked like me, was like me, because I know it's way more of us out there than just me and him. So um, it made me feel a certain kind of way. Part of me was angry. Um, part of me wanted to do more. So I reached out to Derek. I reached out to... Um, comic geek speak and they helped me they told me what i would need to do to start a podcast pointed me in the direction i found the early youtube video um that talked about um how easy it is to getting into podcasting with a low cost of entry um i followed that tutorial to the t they told me about a free program called audacity that was a free open source recording program I told me about you can get you a little stick microphone. It's before, you know, I'm looking at this uh, recent mic I got, which is like a $80 microphone. That's like studio quality microphone. I had a little 10 to $20 stick microphone, USB microphone that I got from, I think, Staples or like Office Depot. That was horrible. Um, and with that program and just that one like 30 minute video uh, giving you instructions on how to do a podcast. I did it my you know first podcast they kind of mentored me and helped me kind of structure the format that I wanted to do around my podcast they told me the things that they did um comic geek speak was nice enough because they were growing and they were so big and they were like the first to really have sponsors they had their own message board and they were giving people space on their message board which I was forever thankful for because I met cool people like uh, Derek, um, and talk to him even more because, um, they started giving everybody space. Anybody that wanted to podcast, that started the podcast, they gave them a, their own little corner on their huge message board. I met people like that's how I met Heath. Um, and we became quick friends. I met, um, Michael Myers that, uh, um, does geek brunch and multiple podcasts on, uh, Derek's deliberate noise network as well. Um, uh, and a ton of other great people. I just met good people. Um, and that encouraged me just the, the community that was surrounding it, the support I got from other, um, uh, people that were already podcasting. They helped me come up with the formula, which led to the comic book savant. And, um, that was, um, what started it, but I wanted to represent because it wasn't much and still not at the level that it should be probably is not the, the, um, the exact level of representation I would like to see across the board, uh, with African American, uh, representation in the comic book industry in general, um, the media of, comic book media, all that kind of stuff. I feel like it's lacking and it needs to be more done. Um, but that was what motivated me to do it. Um, and I didn't want to fall into the stereotype of 
uh, be this militant uh, black man or angry black man because it's a stereotype that's always associated. And I've always been, you know, I'm six foot, um, rather big, large guy, even post-surgery still at this point, I'm still like 300 pound guy. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of imposing or intimidating if you were to see me for most people. Um, so I tend to give off that vibe before people really know me or talk to me. They tell you look angry or you look mean. So I, oh, I immediately give off the aura of the angry black man. So I had to, um, I didn't want to fall into that stereotype. And and though I had like, I'm not going to say anger, but I felt, I just felt a certain kind of way because I was like, why aren't we being represented more? Why isn't it more comic fans of African-American descent doing this? It's, it's a, you know, a new thing in frontier. And, um, but I had to pull back once I started doing it, it was all about, I'm just, you know, it, color and race had nothing to do with it and i didn't have anything against those shows that i listened to i i listened to them i thoroughly enjoyed them i just missed 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 the fact that i didn't hear other people like me and it was so few and far between so that was what motivated me um once i started all of that kind of melted to to away because you know at the end of the day color and race and all the other barriers that people use as excuses to get to know each other don't mean anything. We all connect on the one basic principle. We love comics. Um, and I just love talking to people and sharing my knowledge and my passion for comics with other people. So that ended up being the driving force, though it wasn't what initially motivated me. Um, it's what has sustained me in 14 years and all the ups and downs and the hardships I've gone through personally to continue to do a podcast about what I love. And that's why I changed the tagline for the podcast from when I initially started for the serious comics fans, because at that time, the only people that would find the podcast was only serious comic fans that were techies that would seek out podcasts they weren't nearly as easy and accessible to find as they are now by a long shot when i started 14 years ago um and that's why it has changed and as i've grown and i've learned from my ups and downs as podcasting um and the audience has changed more you are way more vocal and communicative to me so i know like um the the demographic and the the community that we built is people from all shapes sizes races creeds everything and i did not want to be ex uh to feel like it's an exclusive thing or you have to be this um put your pinky up in the air when you sip kind of elite comic fan i wanted this to be for everyone so it migrated uh, the messaging migrated over the time as i've grown and i've learned and i've um become a you know, I went through a divorce, a really horrible divorce and had a bad marriage. I, you know, remarried, uh, met my soulmate, been happier than I ever have. So I found certain pieces. I've uh, been a father. I've been a grandfather at this point. Um, you know, I've gone through so much change and the show has changed in that time frame. So um, I feel like the show has been the best it's ever been now because of you guys and, and the, because of the personal journey I've gone on. So though it started in a place of um, insistence, because I insisted to be the next African-American podcaster, and I wanted to prove that we were just as valid as comic fans as any other comic fan that was out there, and that we could speak intelligently about comics, and we could be passionately uh, be passionate about comics. Uh, we would not be ashamed of being comic fans, because in our in our society, I was teased and ridiculed, uh, just like other people, even more so sometimes in African American community, uh, community, because being a comics fan when I was growing up in the eighties and early nineties, wasn't a cool thing. And you got chastised because you were supposed to, because you were black, even by your own race, if you weren't a jock, um, you were in books and comics and reading, you got ostracized by your, by your own. And it's the true thing. Uh, and so I wanted to break all those stereotypes for myself and for others like me, but then it turned out 
to be something bigger that I never expected. And I'm proud that I've been able to do it and continue to do it to learn from all of that. Because I feel like this journey that I've taken with you guys have made has made me a better person overall. So that's a long winded answer to uh, what made you want to host a, a podcast, if that makes sense. And that went really long, but I felt like that needed to be said. So I said it. Um, any new changes coming down the pipeline this year? Uh, easy answer to that question. Listen to episode 461. I kind of gave a whole layout and game plan of some of the things that I have in work. Some of the things we've seen, we've seen the t-shirts that I promised the new designs roll out. Um, you guys really had seen the like those, uh, they're selling slowly, but surely, um, if you want a cool t-shirt, check out the designs. I will, um, if you go to the website, comicbooksvermont.com, click on the link for the store. It takes you right into the Teespring store. We got t-shirts, we got hoodies, we got mugs, we got stickers, we got a whole bunch of little stuff. Go show your support. It's cool stuff. Worked hard on it with the design company that came up with the three new designs. We're going to be rolling out more merchandise and, and things as I, I spoke in that, pod, that, in that um, podcast episode about the direction of things, how with sponsorship, how things have changed and how I'm opening up these other avenues with merchandise, um, adding even more content to the Patreon for to give you guys more value added and how I felt about all that. All of that is detailed in episode 461. I think the episode is uh, just called uh, The Direction of Comic Book Savant for 2020, basically and beyond, because uh, a lot of the plans I have is going to push the show beyond just the year of 2020. Um, there's a lot more than I want to do, but I need your support, you guys' support to make those things happen. So listen to that episode. You'll get all the info there. Um, favorite comic book artist and why? Um, I have a couple. I just went with some of the ones current, not all time, because I've done countdown episodes in the past year of my favorite artists, I think of all time and writers and all that. I did an updated list right now. Some of my favorite artists are Mateus, uh, uh, Stan, Stan Lucho, I think he's one of the artists that work on the uh, IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles main series. Love him. I hope uh, Santa Lucho, Santa Lucho? It's Marteus Santa Lucho. I haven't seen an interview with anybody pronouncing his name, so I could not. I'm just winging it from the, the way it's spelled and hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, also, Jesus Saez. I've liked uh, Jesus from the first thing I remember seeing Jesus's artwork on was DC's Manhunter, maybe a decade or more ago. He's bounced around and he's done stuff. I think he did stuff work on like Checkmate um, at DC. Um, he's been all over the place, but now he's over at Marvel and he was he was working on the the Doctor Strange, Mark Wade Doctor Strange run that just ended and now it's launched into another book, another Doctor Strange title. I don't know if he's still on that book. But um, his artwork just evolved. I always liked it. It's gotten even stronger. And I really liked the, that his work on Doctor Strange that I've seen recently. Um, one of my favorite artists, and it might be because I met him and I have. Um, I purchased one of his sketchbooks and he actually he did a sketch for me years ago when he first was starting out over at D.C. He was working on Robin with Adam Beecham and I have a head sketch he did. I think I have a picture of it on the website in the gallery that Freddie William Freddie E. Williams II, one of the nicest people that you ever want to meet um, in the comic book industry. Well, I, I've met a lot of cool people, but he's one of the nicest and humblest uh, people I've ever met. Love that guy to death. Um, I saw him at a few different um, Comic Geek Speak get togethers and conventions. And then I think I saw him maybe one time at Heroes Con. And when I was still in North Carolina, I got a chance to see him again. Great him and his wife. Which he would travel with him, help him with all his business stuff. He's blown up even more. He's he's uh, really been making his mark recently at DC doing the uh, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Batman crossovers. They've done what well, I think James Tinian writes it. He draws it. They've done like uh 
three miniseries now. The third one just wrapped up, I think. I don't know if they're even doing more, but he's a great artist. He's done like a lot of stuff with with DC, like with um, Masters of the Universe, Thundercats, stuff like that. He's a great, great, great artist, and I love his art style. Um, another artist recently that's um, has really been blowing up over at Marvel is Pepe Larraz. I liked him a couple of years ago when they did the Kanan. Um, it was supposed to be an ongoing series. It only lasted 12 issues. He, um, uh, Kanan, if you're unfamiliar from Star Wars Rebels, they gave him a series. It was a prequel to where we see him as an adult in Rebels. It was called, uh, 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 um, I just totally went blank. Kanan, the last Padawan, I think it was, is what the series was called. And then I think they just shortened the name to Kanan, uh, um, he worked on that book and I liked his artwork and I reviewed it on YouTube, I think, and I was talking about how I really liked his art style. Then he's been doing the uh, House of X Powers of 10. He was one of the artists on that. So they put him on a high profile book and people have just been raving about his artwork ever since. Found him a little bit earlier through the Star Wars stuff over at Marvel uh, that, uh, that when I first saw his artwork. Another artist is Marco Chicheco. I just love his art style. I think I first saw Marco's work with uh, Greg Rucka's uh, Marvel Big Shots Punisher run that then led, after that run finished, it led into uh, Punisher, was it Warzone? That he drew all with Greg Rucka. It was a combination to that run. I just love his pencils. It's just something about his style that just immediately attracts me to him. I can't liken him to any other artist that I really like, like my overall all-time right um, artist, but it's just his artwork speaks to me is the only thing I could say uh, when it comes to Chicheco, and I just love seeing his artwork anywhere. Um, another artist of mine that I, that I like is Jason uh, uh, Fabuk. I first saw Jason's artwork, I don't know how many years ago. It was during uh, Scott Snyder's New 52 Batman run. He did a maybe annual two, was it? It was a story on uh, Mr. Freeze or Dr. Freeze, Mr. Freeze, um, when I first saw his artwork. And he's reminiscent of uh, Jim Lee to me in his art style, but he, he has his own flavor to it. And, uh, you know, Jim Lee is one of my favorite artists of all time and his style. Um, and he could actually make a monthly book where, you know, with Jim Lee, not so much. So that just immediately kind of struck a chord with me with his artwork. Um, and I really liked it. And last but not least on this list is uh, Andre uh, Sor Sorrentino. I saw his artwork on on the Jeff Lemire green arrow run from a couple years ago they have it collected in a um uh collection uh that encompasses the whole run with them together on it um his artwork reminds me of marco it's the i love the use of cross hatching shadows um a sketchy but yet established style they just both speak to me but they're the two, two artists that i can use that they cut their styles are similar but they have their own flair and they just speak to me in a certain kind of way on how they uh do what they do and it just works 100 percent for me so i'm a huge fan of these artists i know it wasn't a single artist but those are some of the artists that i follow that are currently out there that I really enjoy and that's not all of them but those are the ones at the time uh, that have come to mind for me next question I have is top five comics you are reading at the moment right now the five books that I'm reading and I'm enjoying quite a bit at the moment is uh, Red Hood Outlaw I've been uh, I think I've reviewed them Recently, I reviewed one. I reviewed uh, the first two trades once since they've renamed it Red Hood Outlaw. Because these be like what Red Hood and the Outlaws, but it's Red Hood Outlaw currently. I've reviewed the first two trades. I can't remember where. I don't know if one was here, one was on Patreon, or both have been on Patreon. But I've reviewed two volumes of that. Thoroughly enjoying that book. Um, 
Next is the original graphic novel series based on The Legend of Korra. Uh, animated show that they've been doing. I love those. Those are just a palate cleansing. Uh, they, they come out every couple of months. They're uh, like 80 to 90 pages long. They're not super long. Uh, they continue right where the cartoon series or the animated series left off and building in that world. And they will do a storyline that will last anywhere from like three to four uh, of these these many original graphic novels that come out uh, every so often. And so I enjoy those when whenever they come out because I love that show and love that world. So I like staying immersed in it. Uh, next thing is Oblivion Song, Robert Kirkman's new series from Image or Sky his imprint over at Image Skybound. Um, I've enjoyed that. I've been reviewing those trades as well. I should have another review coming up in the next month or so. Um, so I really enjoy that sci-fi kind of not time travel, but dimension hopping kind of adventure is, is definitely different with some horror elements because it's Kirkman. You got to have something over the top in it. Uh, been enjoying that since I've uh, read it. Um, also, um, Animosity. I've talked about this book numerous times to a nauseating amount that my homeboy Ed hooked me up with, told me about. I've been, I think I've reviewed the first two volumes. I need to get around to reading the third volume. I think they're up to volume five or six now. So I'm like behind. But again, I rotate my books. So I don't just read one of everything and bore you with talking about the same book over and over again. So I rotate it. So it's almost coming back up in rotations for me to read and review the third volume of animosity but i love that book uh who publishes that book uh, let me tell you guys what's the publisher for animosity uh, i hate when i can't remember stuff uh, i'm getting old animosity. aftershock comics yeah aftershock there um yeah this book is quality so um yeah i need to get volume three four four i saw another one that just was yeah excuse me they're up to volume five so i got some catching up to do so i definitely got to get on that um soon but great series a mature from mature readers only definitely some graphic content in that and then last but not least, something I read recently that really caught me off guard because I'm not a huge fan of the character. And that's the new Donny Cates Venom book. I read uh, read uh, that for review on on uh, the Patreon podcast uh, and really, really enjoyed it. So those are five books that I'm uh, reading right now that that could again off the top of my head. I'm reading a ton of stuff because I rotate out constantly. Um, I don't read too much of any one thing. I, like I said, I try to, to cover all my bases. I, I'll read uh, an issue or a trade of, of one book. Then I go to the complete opposite thing and switch up. I don't like dig down too much um, in, into too much of one book because I want everything I read, I review and I talk about, cause, cause especially if it's good. I want to tell you guys about it. And if it's bad, I want to warn you guys about it. So pretty much everything I do, I kind of keep that in mind and kind of make sure I rotate. So I'm not ta talking about Marvel or DC so much for certain times. I go where the wind blows as far as where my interest goes. So sometimes I might be a, one heavier than the other, but I'm trying to switch it up and throw some image, throw some Valiant in there and some other publishers that you guys are making me aware of as well. So, um, but those are some of the books right off the top of my head that I can say that I've been reading and enjoying that were recent reads. And last question for this episode of Ask Comic Book Savant is what new comic book movies coming this year or, uh, or next you are excited about. And I just stuck to the year 2020 and um, I'm super excited about Superman Red Sun animated movie. It comes out, uh, comes out soon. It might be out by the time you hear this episode it's just released around that time frame. So um, that is definitely what I'm anticipating. Uh, Black Widow, of course, in May, we have Morbius, which I wasn't on my radar till I saw the first teaser trailer, and it really has my interest. Uh, and the Eternals, because I'm really curious on how they how this movie is going to play out. We haven't seen any trailers yet, but it comes out in November of 2020, and I'm stoked to see what that 
might be and where what direction it might take us in the future with the MCU. But those are the questions that you guys asked me. I hope you guys enjoyed the answers. That's all I really have for you guys for this episode. As always, check out the website, comicbooksavant.com. Um, I'll have, um, you have links there when you go to the website for the store. If you're curious about the Patreon and you want to see more about it, you can go to patreon.com forward slash comic book savant. You can check that out. Um, and for as little as a dollar a month, you get a whole nother additional podcast and you get four more episodes a month of me blabbering on about comics. Um, you have other bonuses and, uh, different things in the Patreon campaign at the different levels for you guys to check out. Um, so definitely if you want to help support, check out those things. Like I said, if you can't do Patreon, try to do a t-shirt. If you can't do a t-shirt, Hey, retweet, submit questions for the next episode of ask comic books. All those things contribute to the show and make the show better. So whatever you can do, I greatly appreciate. And it only makes the show better. Your input makes the world of difference in the content that I put out. And I just appreciate it a lot. And I love hearing from you guys. Um, if you haven't already, check out the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the Savant Society. Request uh, entry into the group. Once I see your request, I will approve it. And then you can come in and join the great community that we're building there. But that's all I have for you guys for this episode. As always, you guys have a good week. I'll talk to you soon and take care. Thank <laughs> you.